Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm and today we will be looking at managing big trace files and specifically with Wireshark. But this is going to affect any protocol analyzer you use so it's going to be pretty helpful regardless of your choice of weapon. So here's a little bit about what my setup looks like. I've got a computer, specifically a laptop, it's an Alienware, and Wireshark. So I've got the latest version of Wireshark. It's running on Windows 64-bit and of course my Alienware has uh, a nice beefy CPU and 16 gigs of RAM, so everything's good. And I'm not doing anything else on my computer when I ran these tests. I left my machine fairly idle. So I want to demonstrate various techniques when working with large trace files. And my definition of a large trace file, anything bigger than a gig. I was working with somebody and he had a 2, a 3, and a 4 gig trace file. And at first we said we can't use it. And then I said, well, wait a minute. There's some ways we can work with it. And that's what I want to walk through it with you. So the trace file details. This one is a PCAP. Now this is important. So depending on your analyzer of choice, you're going to have a different trace file format. They range from uh, the legacy sniffer ENC formats through PCAP through CAP. And the latest version of Wireshark is PCAP NG. So you should probably be just aware of the format you're using. Uh, it may come into play depending on which option you choose. It's 2.5 gigabyte trace file. <laughs> this is the funny part. I gave up trying to load the trace file uh, after actually several hours, but I tried it a few times and after an hour I just gave up. It wouldn't even load. It just kept counting the packets and it was barely loading after hours, so I just gave up. So you wouldn't really have that much patience in the field. You would have given up after a few minutes. So the first approach is packet slicing. I've talked about packet slicing in previous videos. And what you do is um, you take your uh, trace file and you're going to use a utility or a technique to chop off the first so many bytes. In this case, I chose 100 bytes. Because uh, if you want the MAC address, if you want the IP information, the TCP UDP information, and some application data, 100 bytes is plenty. It, it'll give you quite a bit of the data for the application side of it as well. So depending on how many packets are over your slice size, that'll affect the final size of your trace file. Sometimes you'll notice that your trace file will go down 70-80% and sometimes it only goes down 2 or 3%. So it all depends, right? Depends on the size of the packets in the trace file. So we're going to use edit cap with the option dash S, S is in SAM. And you do this from the command line. So if you work over to the Wireshark folder and you find editcap.exe and you double click, it just kind of flashes at you. So you need to make sure you are in the command line to do this. If you want to see all the options, edit cap space dash H will show you all the options on your screen. If you'd like to look at the manual while you work on this, there's the URL on wireshark.org for the online manual. And I wanted to measure how long it takes to create a 100 byte sliced trace file and what the final size is. So here's the batch file I used in Windows. So for the people who don't have Windows, you'll probably do a bash script or something comparable, right? So in my case, I did echo off, CLS, echo, you'll see all this stuff. And then there's the main meet right here, edit cap dash S100. And then the file name going in, the file name coming out. And then the time again. So just a little explanation on what all this means. Focus on the important parts of the batch file. Echo, percent time percent is a system variable and it returns the current time so when you do this the first time it shows you the current time then you do this and you're going to show the time again so the first one is like starting your stopwatch so to speak because you're just marking the time you started and then this will mark the end of the process or like stopping the stopwatch so the results are, are quite interesting so I ran the test 10 times because it doesn't take long and each test took an average of 10 seconds so that's really important to understand. This, this whips through it pretty quick. The original trace file was 2.5 gig and the sliced is 2.3 gig. Again, the majority of the packets in my trace file were not 100 bytes or larger. So there wasn't much to slice. And if you might see something totally different with your trace file of choice. So now I want to take a different approach. Forget slicing for a moment. I want to use Wireshark file open. I know this does not work. It takes way too long, but I'm going to use a read filter. And this is really important. Uh, one customer didn't even know that was in the open dialog box. He just glanced over it. And you can use the uh, read syntax. So ip.addr is what I put on there, equal, equal, and the IP that I'm focusing it on. 
and the time it took to load the trace file with this read filter was 1 minute 48 seconds and I saved the trace file that I just created and it was only 59 meg so to load that new trace file was only four seconds so that's a great way to pull out an IP address or a port number or whatever or several IP addresses right uh, and then create a brand new trace file instead of trying to manage with the two or three or four gig trace file now you can also do the same thing with T shark from the command line right same kind of thing so I created a batch file just like I did before and the syntax T shark dash R you need that that's the file going in minus two dash two you need that for two passes dash R is the read filter and that's it right there and then dash W is the file you're going to create so the time it took to open that trace file and process it with that read filter was one minute 40 seconds again very reasonable the size of the filter trace file was 62 meg and the time to load the filter trace file was three seconds again very reasonable and you can actually do this in the field without too much of a delay and then the last approach is to use edit cap and you can create many smaller files so I wanted to create multiple 100,000 packet trace files I chose 100,000 packets as an arbitrary number for a trace file that is usually handled quite well with most systems you might find you get a good away with maybe 500 600,000 packets whatever it happens to be you can play with this as you see fit and it created a whole bunch of files 69 of them to be exact and the time to create all these files was only nine seconds and the file sizes ranged from 9 meg to 98 meg again depending what was in that slice of, of packets uh, slice isn't a good word in that group of packets then you you'll see different file sizes for those trace files and then if you want to bring them into Wireshark you can always merge them and put you know trace file 1 and 3 and 8 together if you'd like to do that kind of thing so I hope that helps enjoy yourself and give them all a try and there's many more I'm sure you'll tell me about but I'll probably write another article to follow up on this one with a few more techniques have a good day bye for now